Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to part two of Web3 and Travel Conference, where we meet the speakers uh, who will be on stage. They are the innovators building in the Web3 and travel space. Um, and I'm very excited to hear about what they've been building um, and what excites them about this space. So let's start with Sam. Sam, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks so much for having me here. Doing great, thank you. So tell us about about uh, tell us about your background. What brought you into the Web three and travel space, and what are you building? What are you looking at currently? Sure, yeah, it's kind of a, a windy, uh, ironically long road to to get here. It was a bit of a travel in and of itself. Um, so I'll try to consolidate it as best I can. Basically, although I'm currently in Austin, Texas for cons the Consensus Conference, I'm normally based in Las Vegas. My background is in media. I ran and operated a poker content production company doing streaming production distribution of live tournaments and events. Uh, what qualifies me to, I guess, be interested in and in now work a little bit in Web3 travel is that I tra I've traveled a lot. So over the past 10 years or so, not to the extent of being a digital nomad, but um, have put in a lot of a lot of days, weeks, and months into exploring the world and seeing different places. Um, for me, so my, I, I guess my crypto background then, I've been investing for several years. I got deeply into the NFT space in particular in the early part of 2021, like a lot of people. Uh, that was primarily catalyzed by my background in media. Uh, I was always obsessed with bringing fans together, in that case, poker fans, to enjoy what they're most passionate about. So NFTs and their ability to create digital communities and drive uh, digital fandom was really compelling to me. So that's been my line of work doing consulting and brand work for the past couple of years. And then I've been an angel investor for a number of years and uh, both as an angel investor, as well as the VC that I'm currently working with Dream Ventures, uh, we are heavy investors in the travel tech space. So without getting into the details of those, we've invested in a hand, and handful of cool travel adjacent businesses. and. All that is to say, this has kind of come together for me more recently in the Web3 travel world. So, so my bread and butter is Web3, but I've been, been investing in the travel space. And I see, we'll get to more as this call goes on, getting more of the details of this. But I see, um, I see Web3 is, or I should, I should say, I see travel as one of the primary use cases for Web3 technology and making the entire industry more efficient, optimized, and ultimately better for travelers and consumers. So. At, at the conference, I will be providing some uh, some of the investor side of the perspective in investing in the Web3 travel space. And then I'm kind of working on some side projects as well that uh, are a little bit stealthy right now, but it's just a space that I'm really excited about. I'm looking forward to talking about it with you guys. Awesome. Well, I would, I would like to hear more about the projects you're building as well. Um, and also what gets your eye when investing in this area. So we'll, we'll dive into it. Um, right after so let's hear it from josh hi josh hey carl how are you doing great thank you for joining us no sorry if there's a little bit of noise in the background i'm in a co-working space at the moment i try to find a quiet room it might get a bit loud so i apologize in advance for that totally fine yeah let, let us know uh, if you ever need to to move uh, but we hear you great right now so please let us know about your background uh, what brought you here uh, what excites you about this space yeah so i mean similar to sam i discovered web3 during the pandemic right and i was living in my own in a small apartment i, I recently joined twitter um the best of a few people i was working with they said you need to get on twitter that's where everything's happening i joined and i was just scrolling through the timeline and i started seeing all these words and phrases and communities crop up that i wasn't very familiar with now, i'm always a curious person so i just kind of jumped in joined a few of these discord chats and started to explore the world of NFTs and crypto. And this was early in 2021, I think like February, March 2021. Wasn't quite early enough to or deep enough in the space to get to Board Apes or any of those early connections. Um, but I found something in the middle of the pandemic that I didn't expect to find on just some like random internet groups, which was just sheer energy. Um, this space, Web3, crypto, NFTs, had an energy about it which I hadn't seen before and I've set up a few companies in the past some did well some weren't so successful 
But in this, I saw passion and drive from people that I'd never seen before. Um, I, I was working on a travel business, Day 365, with my business partner at the time, Paul. And, you know, he's a longtime Airbnb host. I've been involved in Airbnb hosting for a while as well. And it kind of came together that we were building a platform that was by Airbnb hosts for Airbnb hosts. It originally was a Web2, a traditional brand. Upon discovering Web3, the wheels kind of started turning in my head. And I was like, right, I think we need to pivot this business to serve people and give the most value to people that we possibly can. Um, and that kind of coincided with learning more about digital nomads and, and traveling around a lot more myself. And so gradually, like this thesis in my head started to build up that Airbnb and Booking.com, these other companies weren't serving their top 1% of users, the power users of these platforms. So we wanted to create Stay365 as a Web3 brand, a platform that would really focus on serving digital nomads as best as possible. And I could go on for hours about my thesis around digital nomads, like look at Pakistan, Nigeria, India. Digital nomads are the fastest growing global population. And I think as years go on, and when you look at network states and the concept that Balaji is talking about, and the power that Web3 is giving, sovereign, uh, individual sovereignty, financial freedom. This kind of converges into a very interesting value proposition. I think digital nomads and just traveling groups of people that choose to kind of ignore borders, focus on what they can control, and Web3 empowers that. Um, that's basically what I'm building for. That's amazing. That's um, great to hear about your background and what, that really you found your passion into building, um, like mixing passion and um, work and building something that's useful for so many people. And yeah, I think uh, global citizens is something that we start seeing more and more um, and providing like the tools to be able to be mobile, right? And at the same time, have access to payments id and things that are just work across um borders and yeah. across different technologies like that that's awesome yeah and definitely i think web3 plays a big part in that luca let's hear it from you so you are the organizer of web3 and travel conference it is the second year that this is hosted um so i would definitely love to hear what brought you to start this event and also um overall what brought you into the web3 and travel space okay let's start with the second question uh what brought me in the web3 and travel space um well the fact that i got into travel through in the web1 era with a little website of my own which turned out to be a precursor of airbnb and then i lived through the web2 era when the big platforms came in and disrupted everything including my own little business and when I discovered first Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is more like a monetary thing. Uh, at the time, it wasn't clear it was going to affect more than money. And, and later Ethereum, which opened to the concept of DAOs, so decentralized autonomous organizations, which are basically associations or cooperatives with crypto. Uh, that, that's when I realized that something was going to change in the travel industry. And uh, a little bit like Josh, like trying to build an alternative to Airbnb, um, which was a bit early at the time. Um, so Web3 felt a lot like Web1, where one person can do something or a group of people can do something. And you don't need to go through a corporation, don't need to be part of a corporation and don't need to make profit the only drive, uh, which is a good thing. I mean, profit is what makes things work. Um, but there are other ways human can organize or coordinate. And with crypto, we have some new tools now. And I'm also a very curious person, so I always like to try new things. Uh, try new things in Web 1, so with the internet, really paid off a lot. Basically, I, I could start traveling for basically 10 years full time. That's how deeply technology impacted my life. And Web 3 is, is pretty similar because you can... Well, you can make a lot of money very quickly in Web3. Let's be upfront with that. Individuals can do that. Uh, so that's exciting. Let, let's, you know, let's be honest. Um, for the whole Web2 era, the only way to make it was to be part of these big corporations. And now we can do it on our own. And if you are an like 
I was going to say simple-minded, but not like uh, individual-minded person uh, as, as I am, you prefer to do things alone, right? So Web3 for me is a bit like Web1 plus communities um, and, I, and, I, and I like it. So I, I got into that. And the conference, the conference, because we for a long time with Trips Community tried to do, do, to do something impactful, we couldn't uh, before the technology was too early, then the adoption wasn't there and still not there. And we said, okay, what about a conference? That sounds something like the industry needs and we would enjoy doing it. So we did it. That's it. That's the only reason. Uh, do something which makes sense and not just trying to, you know, be the next Airbnb or something. And uh, that was great last year. We really enjoyed that. And so we decided to repeat. And this year is probably even better because we have bigger names. The industry is bigger. It's more people working on, it, on this. So yeah, I think it's like, the natural uh, follow-up of what we'll be doing for a few years. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's definitely um, early, although we can say it's early for blockchain and crypto, it's even earlier for Web3 and travel. And I think you're the first conference really targeting this uh, vertical and it's only, it's only your second year. Um, I think back to my first um, Bitcoin and Ethereum conferences like eight years ago, right? And it was like this meetup groups, uh, 20 to 30 people. And then look today, um, actually Sam is at consensus. Um, I imagine there's tens of thousands of people on the ground. Um, and that took what, six, five years, five to six years to build. Um, and it feels like every time there's more, it's exponential, right? So um, last year we've seen it with NFTs where even within one year we went from <laughs> a few projects to a huge boom. And then I think Web3 and travel were, we're starting to see that growth and adoption. Um, and it does take, people like you, Luca, and uh, people behind the conference to educate and bring more crowd into this. Um, and yeah, I think one interesting thing that I noticed with uh, Web3 and travel uh, industry is that a lot of people come from the travel background, not necessarily from tech or from the travel industry, and they or they built travel tech, and then they actually saw the pain points um, or like you said, like too many middlemen or too many intermediaries and trying to change that. And there's, you guys see real value in Web3. And I think that's really interesting versus maybe other ecosystem where it's more technical driven at first. So yeah, um, a bit of my background as well. Um, so I came mostly from a crypto and uh crypto background, I was early in, like I mentioned, just helping protocols build and launch um, in the DeFi space, infrastructure, um, and being more on the marketing and PR side, helping shape how we communicate about blockchain technology um, in, in the media, in conferences, and so on. Um, and through the years, I've been marketing and doing events for other companies, and I always wanted to have my own as well. Like you said, there's huge opportunity for individuals to build uh, their own communities and al find alignments into what resonates. Um, so yeah, for me, it was building this NFT community called Trippy Sailors. Um, so the goal is to create NFT um, NFT backed travel drops. So right now we partner with Catamaran Guru. So the first shops will be around sailing. Um, there's a lot of excitement from travel companies to, to start applying NFTs and start building communities around um, NFTs. Um, I think TravelX was a big one recently that we've seen that did NFT tickets. Um, so yeah, I think um, NFTs are just easy to grasp concept. It's in your wallet. You can transfer it. You can gift it. And there's huge amounts of innovations around that. Um, so yeah, I would like to hear also from Sam, what kind of use cases, what kind of applications excite you? And just overall, where do, where do you want to see this space going? Uh, uh, Sam, you muted. You muted, yeah. Every time. 
Um, yeah. I was I was saying it's a it's a good question. I'm going to kind of steer away from I think what I was maybe more tactical and technical of use cases, thinking about like the transferability of tokenized reservations or uh, privacy concerns around travel data and things of that nature. What I'm most interested in, and this kind of harkens back to some of the NFT media fandom side of things that I most focus on in most of my work today, but in how, how travel exists as a passion activity. So I, I find this personally from many of the trips that I've taken, whether it's a destination that I've been to, an experience that I've had, a restaurant that I've perhaps dined at, if I'm, let's say, you know, I, I guess I mentioned based in Vegas, if I'm talking to someone and there's someone who is, say, lives in the United States with me, but we've had a shared experience abroad, that gives us some sort of connection with immediacy that I find to be highly scalable. And I think finding mechanisms for creating community through a shared love of travel as a key part of one's identity and specifically connecting your travel experiences to that identity and making really what is your online persona um, a key, I guess, tying the places that you love to, to visit and the experiences that you have while you visit those places, tying that to your online persona and creating community around that, I think is really compelling to me. So creating, I guess, scalability around travel as a passion activity and then even further than that creating longevity and staying power to travel experiences because i think there's a real problem in the current state of travel where you know there's there's all this pre preparation that goes into travels and then you have this finite window of enjoyment let's say you're on a week-long trip you enjoy that trip for a week and then sure you have the memories and the the recollection maybe you bring home a souvenir something that brings you back to that time but there really isn't an authentic way to reconnect with this experience that you had at a future point in time. And I think there's potential to integrate various creative utility and other sorts of tactics that are digitally driven so you can enjoy the, the places that you've been to and the experiences that you've had in a new, refreshed, ongoing type of way without necessarily needing to physically be there. So I think it's that's that's a little bit teaser as to kind of what I'm working on, which uh, I hope actually by, by the conference May 15th, I'll be able to share more at that point in time. Um, but that's really like where I'm most excited about is drilling into travel as a passion activity and how it brings people together to form global communities. Love it. I think that there's huge opportunity even for brands maybe to connect with people at the, like their passion and interest level. So, um, you know, instead of targeting by your current geography, you target by where have you traveled and get specific discounts um, for experiences that are very targeted to your interest. That's, love it. Um, I think that that's very interesting to hear. Josh, how about you? What excites you? What what are you looking forward to in this space? So I think I'm probably going to do the same thing as Sam and not go into like too technical of a detail about what like we're working on and kind of like the thesis that we have, again, like refocusing on digital nomads. I think there are two central things that come up um, when thinking about practical cultural use cases for Web3 travel, and those would be identity and access. I think firstly, you know, as we're spending more and more time in a digital world versus, you know, the, the, the real world, whatever your opinion of that may be, it's happening and it's going up. And in 10 years time, it's going to probably have gone up even more. I think if, if you're a traveler, if you're a digital nomad, you love to share your travels and your adventures, you know, from the typical Instagram blogger who's posting reels of their travels to somebody who just wants to, you know, show their friends or family or, you know, create artistic imagery of all the places that they've been. I think showing your identity through your travel is going to become even more common. I think NFTs and platforms that make this easier to do and potentially allow you to earn a secondary income off of it. Or you know, I think that identity interwoven with travel is going to become increasingly popular and the social networking side of it too. 
um, discovering new communities and meeting up with people. Like the example I always give is imagine if on Airbnb, when you searched in for a, a location, for example, Barcelona, where this conference is being held, you're able to instantly connect with communities of people, digital nomads who are based in that city already. You can chat with them. You can find people who you want to meet up before you've even left where, where you're currently staying up, before you've even booked the trip. Um, so I think just increasing the vectors for people to discover a city before they go or to meet new people and to show their identity and travel on these platforms and it, it, just interweaving everything with the profile. That would be one. And then the other one I think would be access. So the example I give for this one is like Soho House. It's a membership, a yearly membership that you pay to access this community. And I think in NFT at the moment, we're already seeing that access exclusive communities is a big one. When you turn this around and see what the possibilities are for travel within this, whichever groups that you want to be part of, whether you want to limit them to 100 members or 1,000 members or 10,000 members, there's 35 million digital nomads at the moment. There's going to be 120 million. When you look at the possibilities of how that population might divide themselves up into different groups or different units working on things, DAOs and having NFTs, like, you, I think you can see the vision that, that I'm building up towards here. I think that Web3 technology, and not to say that this couldn't be done with existing technology, it could. It could be done with Web2 technology. It's just that Web3 technology is the best operating system to build this on. And I think that the DAOs of the future, the digital nomads of the future, and the groups they organize themselves into, it will be done through Web3 tech. So let's just kind of brief overview of a few of the things I see happening here in the next few years. Luca can tell us more about the DAO since the Web3 and travel is shaping up to become a DAO now. So we'd love to hear about yeah. that. Yeah, actually, when you said, you know, you said your conference, I wanted to interrupt you and say our conference, because this is what, what like in parallel, what we're trying to do here is not only organizing a conference, is creating the framework for future conferences uh, organized by, by us and owned by us. And by us, I mean anybody who wants to help, right? So... The DAO idea is basically to say, um, from the financial point of view, all the money which comes in is managed collectively through a safe. Um, and the safe is managed by people who own the NFTs. And the NFTs are owned by people who helped or purchased, it, purchased the NFTs. So the idea, the ideal outcome is that next year there's two conferences maybe somebody says i want to build you know do a conference in that place at that time and i want to use the framework which was built so you have people with nfts who can vote on it they can invest in that and invest is the right name they can put money into that conference and and make it and make it possible and then get parts of the profits if there are profits um yeah, because this is 10 times harder than just doing a conference where, you know, a few people decide everything, but it's also 10 times, if successful, 10 times more resilient. It can go, basically, it can outlive the founders. It can go ahead without us in, in a few years' time. And yeah, so that, that's kind of the, 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 the high-level explanation of what a DAO is, is like, it's not owned by a company. It's owned by anybody who helps. And it's very experimental. So it, we're going to make mistakes. It's not going to be perfect. Efficiency is the last thing. You know, in DAOs and in crypto, we're not doing this because it's efficient. Uh, we're not having Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or, or a decentralized application because it's efficient. It's not efficient. It's much harder. We're doing it not to concentrate power. Um and again, it's a, it's one, another of the exper of the many experiments we do, and and experiments are great because you learn things in in ways uh, which you cannot learn um, by reading or by looking around. So somebody has to try this, and we're trying this, and uh, we are going to learn. And anybody who can read what we're going to do is going to learn. So even you know, worst case scenario, we have learned something. There's no way we can waste time with that, right? Well, if you do it for profit, you do a conference for profit and you lose money, then it's been bad, right? But in our case, it's a successful, it's a guarantee of success anyway. So we like to play it safe. We like to play and experiment. So definitely love what you what you're building, what the community is building there. And yeah, just uh it's 
built by the community for the community. Um, and I think it's also a, maybe um, like a more scalable model. Um, like you said, if we bring all the brains together to build a structure that's easy to repeat in different parts of the world, that's really interesting. And how can anyone get involved? Like if people want to get involved either with this conference or the DAO, what's the best way? Um, two ways. One way is to come in and help like you're doing, right? You you just appeared one day and you started helping. You, you, took, you took one task in your hands and you are, now you're running these, um, these calls. So you're bringing value and that's going to give you at least one NFT, which gives you one signature in the, in the treasury. So you're going to be one of the people who can accept or not a transaction. Uh, or if people people don't have time, they can purchase an NFT if they start from under dollars. And that gives them the right of, again, a signature and, and also part of the profit in the same way as everybody else. So two ways. One, one way is to bring value by working. One, day is to bring, one way is to bring value by buying the NFT, minting it. And the money of the NFT doesn't go in my pockets. It goes into this treasury of which you become a signer. So it's it's you put you somebody comes in and starts and, and, and puts money, they put money in something they control too, right? And that's again something which has never been done at, at, at that level. So it's it's very interesting to see the dynamics behind that, right? Now, in terms of what you can do to help now, well, now is a bit late because we're close to the conference. Uh probably. It's a good time to start right after the conference when we decide together where we're going to do the next one. That, that's going to be a good time to start. Awesome. And um, the website is web3intravel.com, correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anyone has any closing thoughts or things that you would like to add um, to this conversation? So we're looking forward to seeing everyone at the conference. We're looking forward to see you involved in the community of Web3 and Travel. And feel free to reach out, to get in touch with the speakers. We'd love to connect. I'm going to say one thing before I forget. We have to thank our sponsor. Uh, our sponsor is Sam. Uh, maybe Sam, you want to say a couple of words of, of the company sponsoring the event? Yes, yeah, so I, mentioned, I mentioned the name earlier, Dream Ventures. Um, that's the VC through which I'm a Web3 investor and partner. And we're kind of across all the different verticals that this conference touches in terms of our investment strategy. So we have a handful of investments in travel tech. We have a handful of investments in Web3. And all of that together, very selfishly for me, makes this a really exciting conference, like I said. So we're happy to participate, excited to be there, and looking forward to talking to a lot of great founders, a lot of great builders, and hearing what the community is building at the nascency of the space. I also Thank want you. to add there is still time to be, become one of the sponsors, so just get in touch with uh, with me. Uh, we're going to send you the, the slides. And what's the best way for people to stay in touch with you, Sam? Uh, LinkedIn. So I'm Sam Simmons on LinkedIn. Uh, please connect, reach out, let's hang out, all of the above. And you, Josh? Pardon, sorry, it just got really loud. <laughs> sorry, can you repeat what, what is the best way for people to stay in touch with you? Oh, okay, yeah. So it would probably be on Twitter. I'm the most active. It would be at Josh55J5. Uh, that'd be the best place to reach me on. Great. And you, Luca? Uh, maybe Twitter, uh, Tripluca, T-R-I-P-L-U-C-A. Perfect. And to get in touch with me, we'll be on Twitter as well, at Carla underscore crypto. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. It's really a pleasure uh, speaking to you, learning about what you're building. It's very exciting. Um, see a lot of passion into this space and um, looking forward to see what the future build, uh, builds and holds uh, for Web3 and Travel. And um, see you guys in Barcelona on May 15th. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.